G'day everyone, welcome to the How To Hell Reach ODST web series. Of course, this is a tutorial, part 10. My name is Andrew DFT, and of course in this tutorial we're going to be teaching you how to fully kit it up, put it on your body, and a few tips and tricks needed to kind of finish off tiny pieces of the armor, as well as a basic painting tutorial. But as you can see already, it's quite a long vid, so we'll jump right into it. Okay, so filling the seams. This isn't something I've shown before, but it is relatively easy and very simple. So what you're going to need to grab is just some form of paper clay. You can grab it from any stationery store around, and it should be the same thing no matter what brand it is. So once you've got the paper clay and the piece uh, you are going to use it on, for instance we'll use this uh, big seam on the back of this calf uh, piece, all you do is you put it into a nice um, st strip, a nice strip with some water on it, and you should be able to just push it into the seam. Now, of course, it's not going to be 100% flat at this point. All you need to do is slowly push it in just so that the seam is majority covered. As you can see, I've left a bit out down the bottom just to show you the uh, example of how much it actually fills. Once you've got it on there, leave it to dry. It might take overnight, so it will take a solid uh, seven to eight hours. And then just grab some sandpaper and actually sand the thing down. You can get it pretty flat and almost uh, seamless here. And once it's done that, it should come out nicely looking like so. Very simple, and you can do it for any seam on any pieces of the armor for any costume going ahead. Now sealing the foam. I've taught this before, but we'll cover it again. It's very easy. All you do is grab some wood glue or PVA glue, depending on what it's called in your place of the world, and then just lather it on. Completely throw it on, um, cover up everything possible, all the seams, all the ditches, um, all those 3D layers, just throw it on. It might look like I'm destroying the foam, but trust me, it's not. You'll see in a few seconds. You just want to get it into all the nooks and crannies because it will definitely coat the foam and give it a nice layer. You can do it in one layer or you can do it in three. The more you add, the better it will be. But as you can see, I've got a very significant coating on there and it actually looks pretty, pretty gluey at the moment. But I've done half to show you what this will actually appear as because when it dries, <gasps> magic. It looks exactly the same, you can't tell, except for a tiny darker shade, which uh, shows it's actually working, because that's a nice new protective layer. Now painting the foam. It's very simple, and depends on how extreme you want to go, but we'll cover the basic for beginners here. What you're going to do is grab a nice undercoat. I usually work with grey, so mixing a black and white together, because it gives it a nice offset. Then go ahead and paint it up with your primary colours, so whatever you're wanting to do for your main colour for your armour. I've chosen brown. And then once you've done that and let it dry, grab some black and mix it up with a tiny bit of water. What this is going to do is it's going to dilute the paint a bit and we can actually go and apply it into the crevices and all over the armor piece itself and then smudge it off with either a, uh, a serviette, a towel or your thumbs or fingers. I prefer to use my fingers just because it kind of gives it a different texture and allows it to smudge in quite nicely. Now why am I doing this you might ask because it just gives it a bit more um, difference. Uh, the armor will look a bit more worn and torn. Um, this can be done to different levels of extremis, whether it's very lightly done or, like I like to go with, pretty extreme. Um, but it does give it a very significant look and uh, changes the overall aesthetic. Now what you can do to take it and make it a bit nicer is get a scratched up brush and put some very light white paint onto it and then go ahead and touch up all the little edges. Uh, you don't want to go over over extreme on this, just touching up on those uh, nice little edges to really bring out the corners to make it look like the paint's actually scratched off. You can do this in white or you can do this in silver. It really just depends on what kind of color you've used as the primary coat. I used a brown so white comes out a bit nicer when silver wouldn't show up all that well. But you can definitely see the contrast right now in between the original foam state and now the, uh, well, painted version, which, like I said, these are very beginner um, basic steps, you can go to a whole new level and watch some extra tutorials online to figure out how to get the best out of your product. Now onto helmet customization. Now, I'm not going to show you too much of what to do because I want you guys to go out and explore the possibilities. Look at research and do designs. Other way around. Look at designs and do research. So what I've done is I've just gone with my own basic one from the actual uh, game itself and given it a nice little top coat. Now just to show you that I went through the same process uh, with the helmet, of course I did my PVA coat, then my uh, normal undercoat for the grey, then my primary colours are black, brown and lighter grey, and then of course a dark wash with the black paint, and then weathered it up with the nice white overlay, and it does come out pretty nice. 
Now for the helmet's visor, a lot of you guys have had trouble in making this, so I'll cover it a bit better than I did in the PDF. So what I use as the material is just a standard uh, stationary clear file. So you can find this at any stationary warehouse. Uh, this is a very simple plastic. Uh, it's not 100% strong, but it is uh, easy enough to build with and give us the final result, or a basic version of the final result. So what you can do is you can go cut out those templates. And we'll start uh, cutting out the clear file, so grab a nice sheet, enough room so we can transfer all the uh, templates onto, and trace it out. Now the pen mo or pencil, or whatever you're using, might not come across that well on the uh, plastic, but enough so you can see it and cut it out of the material. And of course you're flipping the templates over so you get both sides. Now this is the tricky part, but it also pretty easy at the same time. You're going to grab the hot glue and put a nice strip down the edge. Then what you can do is uh, do it on the inside just to make sure all the uh, plastic is glued together and it should actually glue pretty fast and hold its position pretty well just because it's hot glue on plastic. And then of course do the other edge and you should now have the helmet, or the, not the helmet, sorry, the top part of the visor looking like this. Now that glue line actually gives it a nice little white edge which kind of has the same look that the ODST visor does, so it kind of works out well. But of course, this is just a very basic set, um, so it can give you something to fill the vi uh, helmet with um, without forking out heaps of money to vacuum form or go through other methods. But just keep that in mind, as a beginner, you can do something different if you don't like it. Then what you can do is transfer the bottom, uh, bottom template out onto the foam, not foam, sorry, onto the plastic, and then uh, go ahead and glue it into position just like you did along those edges and slowly form it like so. Now, this might take a few attempts. It is, uh, or it might be rather difficult for a lot of you beginners, but luckily it's a very cheap plastic, so of course if you don't like how it turned out, scrap it and start again. You want the best possible look for your finished, uh, finished product, so make sure you do get that by trying a few attempts if necessary. Now what we're going to do is going to place it in position. It should fit in pretty well, just with a few little uh, guidelines and uh, helps from your fingers, I guess. What you want to do is put a nice glue strip along the top bridge of the helmet and then put it in perfectly like so. Now do double check that it is sitting in there symmetrical. You don't want it being off-sided or anything, so check at each stage when you glue it in, and then if it isn't in right, just rip it out very carefully and try again. And all you're doing is putting glue along the perimeter of the visor line and putting the plastic down in place. Just be very careful to make sure it does sit nicely, but in the end it should go in there pretty perfectly and look like that. Which, it looks pretty good to be honest, and especially in photo shoots, you can always go in post-production and change that darkness or the color of the visor if you wish. Now on to straps and buckles and how to get it on your body. This is pretty straightforward, but I'll cover it anyway just to give you guys a bit of a helpful insight. Now I'll give you a special technique that I personally use. I'm not too sure if this is 100% universally aware, but if most people are glue straps and buckles, they usually glue it one on top of each other like that. What I do is I actually trace out the uh, position where the strap is gonna go on the piece of foam. So this is just as an example, not the actual armor piece. And then I go ahead and actually cut out halfway through that segment of that piece of armor and then come back in it and cut out that slot. That might sound strange, why am I destroying the armor, but this will make sense down the line. So once I've cut that piece out, I can then actually glue the elastic back into position into that negative spot. Now this whole uh, technique is really to allow that bu uh, buckle, sorry not buckle, that strap and the foam to really meld together. A lot of people that work and build costumes out of foam realize that uh, straps will always break um, due to stress, especially on thigh sections, but this, as you can see, is pretty effective, and once it's dry, it will hold that elastic in position, and you don't ever have to worry about breaking it unless you get run over by a car, which I hope you don't. Um, if, uh, if you do, I really hope the foam uh, does some protection to your body. But back to the point, the elastic will hold in position so it's perfect for thigh sections. And I would recommend you trying it, if not implementing on all the armor pieces on this costume and costumes going ahead. Now the chest plate uh, should be wearable already. We knew that when we uh, created it, so we don't need to worry about that. That should already be set in stone. Now the shoulder piece. The shoulder piece we can do in a few steps. So what you're gonna need is a belt strap and some elastic. Now the belt strap and elastic will uh, help combine these 
pieces uh, to the torso and across your arms. So as long as you mimic what I've just done there, making sure that the elastic uh, will fit across your arm, you shouldn't have a problem. Now the chest plate is relatively easy. All you need to do is grab the uh, belt fabric and a buckle and make yourself a belt that literally goes all the way around with enough uh, room to fit the foam in and sit there snugly. It shouldn't have any uh, wobble room, it should sit there nice and uh, tightly but without cutting off your breathing space. Now with the thighs we're going to grab some elastic strap and we're going to only need one to buckle it around our thigh and the other will hold it to our hip. So create a nice little strap like that that will go all the way around your thigh make sure it's uh, doesn't need to be too tight, but enough to actually hold it in place. And then you can cut an extra strand, which will attach from the top of the thigh section to maybe you can tie it around the uh, belt um, kind of strap that you have on your pants. That's what I usually do for most of mine, just so it holds and won't actually have to worry about uh, having it slide down your leg when you're walking. For the knee section, if you haven't already, um, we can just put some uh, padding in. Um, I believe you guys might have actually uh, done this when you produced it, as I did mention it in the video, but if you haven't, this is a quick and easy way. You can either use foam just by cutting out two slabs and putting one on the left and one on the right, or you can use maybe something a bit more comfortable like sponges, they actually work pretty well, or you can find some other form of padding, whatever you wish. Either way, just make sure it sits there so it should actually sit just below your knee and the top of your calf and not have to fall down. It should actually hold its position pretty well without cutting off circulation in your calf. For the shin, it's relatively easy as well. All we're gonna do is uh, grab the elastic and two buckles and we're going to make two straps. So one should go one above the other and you can kind of see where they're placed in between those little notches that come in. And then just make sure it goes around the back of your calf and clips in like so. Very simple and very easy. And it should just slot right under that knee plate. Right, they've been designed so they should slot together with no, uh, no trouble. And of course, to finish it off, we've got this little boot piece. All you need to do is grab some elastic and uh, cut it long enough so that it will strap around whatever your shoe or boot may be. So that way it just slides on and off and it will hold its position perfectly. Whether that be on like a, a sneaker that you're using like this, a shoe, or more of a military boot, which is what I personally use. And I recommend if you can find one at a uh, secondhand store, buy one. It'll be worth it for all your future costumes. But nonetheless, they should all be on your body, all fitting nice. No matter what uh, body size or frame you have, you just need to customize the lengths of all the individual strapping to fit your individual limbs. You will take a bit of practice and making sure you do measure it out before you cut it. That way you're not wasting material and wasting money. So that's it. All done and dusted. I hope you guys enjoyed the web series and I hope your armor comes out nicely. Of course, you're seeing mine compared to the one that we use for the templates. Now, the only difference between this one and this one is the fact that I've added a bunch more extra stuff and that all these pouches and stuff can be done by yourselves as well. Nothing too difficult. These scarves, all that, it's all pretty much just a step after this. Nothing you guys can't actually do. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the web series. Now, please don't be alarmed if your costume didn't turn out as great as the one uh, here or the one I'm wearing. Remember, I've done this for five years. I've worked with EVA Foam for a very long time. So I've had a lot of uh, progress and a lot of chance to try out new things but in the end you are learning very fast I've seen a lot of you guys who are beginners making costumes which are pretty much just as good I mean I'm only just building this costume now and I'm 24 and a lot of you guys who are 15 or so are building them just as great so that's what I love to see and that's what I love to do here is to teach you all that I know so you guys can speed up and do it a lot faster than I ever did but remember, at the end of the day, I'm just a fan, just a costume maker like you. I'm not a professional, I'm not someone who's super awesome or uh, skilled in this. I'm just teaching you what I know because I've found it's a cool way to teach people and let others know that they have skills out there that they can learn and enjoy a hobby, which is good fun. But otherwise, again, I want to say thank you so much for being so supportive and enjoying the web series, of course. Share it around with your friends, make a squad, go to cons, all dressed up in ODST costumes. I'd love to see your progress as well. Please share it around. And of course, if you see anyone struggling in any of the comments of any of these videos, help them out. Let them know where you uh, struggle on specific things that they might be also struggling in. And of course, above all, have fun. So with that, I'll conclude the web series. Thank you so much again. It's been a thrill. It's been an enjoyment. I'll be producing more. Check out for more content. Also subscribe if you haven't. And I will catch you later.